A patient has called and made an appointment at the podiatry clinic for treatment of a burn on the dorsum of the foot. Hi there, George. I'm your podiatrist. What's brought you here today? Hi, Charlie. Um, well, I burnt my foot the other day at work. I spilled a bit of oil on it um, and burnt the top of my foot. So I went to the first aid cabinet and got a bandage. It said it was good for burns, so I just stuck that on. Um, but I haven't been able to walk for the last couple of days and it's really, really sore and I can't get it off. Charlie the podiatrist has taken a brief patient history of Jordan and has discovered she is a 45-year-old female who works as a chef at a fish and chip shop. Jordan leads a fairly active lifestyle. She is a non-smoker and is not pregnant. There is a family history of hypertension, which she is currently managing with medication, a beta blocker named atenolol. Jordan has not had any previous problems or issues with her feet, therefore this is her first visit to a podiatrist. Upon inspection of the foot, Charlie determined that the dressing was placed incorrectly with the wrong side applied to the wound, causing it to stick, producing discomfort and pain for Jordan. When Charlie first tried to remove it he noticed the redness and inflammation, with a potential infected area. Okay, well now that I've gathered some medical history, I'd just like to ask what was the first thing you did after you realised you burnt it? Um, I went and got, I went to the first aid cabinet and um, it had the bandage for burns, so I put that on it. Um, I went home and took two Panadols, um, but I haven't been able to walk on it since then. Um, it's really, really painful. I went to um, take it off, but I can't actually, um, can't touch it. It's, it's too sore, um, so I need to get it, yeah. Okay, well let's see it. Or I, or I don't know, it's really, really, really sore. Like I had to get my husband to drive me here because it's really painful. So. Hmm. Okay, so I can remove the bandage, but in order to do this, I'm going to have to use a bit of anaesthetic just to relieve the pain oh, before I do. You're not going to use any needles, are you? No, no, we're okay. going to use, we're going to use the green whistle. Have you ever heard of that? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a drug called methoxyfluorane, and it's an inhalation anaesthetic. Uh, it will not completely remove all the pain, but it will remove some of it. Yeah. So after about six to eight breaths, you should start to feel uh, a bit different, okay. and it should get rid of that pain feeling. Yeah, okay. So you can keep inhaling and exhaling through the mouthpiece uh, as you need. Uh, you need to make sure that you're inhaling correctly, because incorrect inhalation uh, will not deliver the full effect of the anaesthetic. So, just so you know, before we do this, some common side effects are nausea, vomiting, um, sometimes you might get a bit of a cough um, as you begin to inhale, and you might get a bit dizzy. Yeah. Also, um, I hope you're okay with this, but the, the smell and taste are a bit, bit fruity, and it might be a bit off-putting, but it's generally okay. Yeah. Um, there's also going to be an extra cost of $50. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine, yeah. And, uh, just before, you said you've heard of it before, but do you know of your family, if they've ever had any adverse reactions? Um, not that I know of. No, I don't think so. It seems fine. Okay. Jordan objected as she was in unbearable pain, causing Charlie to administer an anaesthetic to reduce the levels of pain. Due to the suspected presence of an infection, a local anaesthetic would not be appropriate. Therefore, the green whistle known as methoxyfluorane was used to manage the pain. Once Charlie removed the dressing, he noticed signs of infection including redness, swelling and a purulent exudate. Jordan continually gained sufficient anesthesia using the green whistle while Charlie was able to sufficiently clean the wound and apply the appropriate dressing. Charlie advised Jordan to come back the next day so he could review the affected area of the foot and see if it required further treatment as well as apply a new dressing. Jordan presents to the clinic the next day for her appointment feeling lightheaded dizzy, weak, has blurred vision, tired and feels like she might faint at any moment. When a beta blocker is combined with methoxyfluorine, these symptoms can be seen due to the hypertensive effects brought upon by both medications. Due to these symptoms, Charlie took Jordan's blood pressure and it was measured at 80 over 55. Charlie has now realized the drug interaction between the beta blockers and the methoxyfluorine. A referral letter was arranged and she was sent straight to hospital.